Hello friends, it is that time again with that Ericsson and today I am doing a UI key bindings uh, video for Crowfall 5.8. Uh, remember guys, this is pre-alpha footage, so let's just get started. All right, so getting started right on the home page, we'll have the option to switch between campaign and kingdom. You'll see a little blurb uh, talking about what a campaign versus a kingdom is. If you don't know the difference, um, check out some of my older videos. I do do a kingdom video and just an overview of Crowfall. Uh, in the top right corner, you have your little hamburger here where you can switch between language and you can log out and quit. Down here in the corner, you'll have the chat and the chat tabs and you can click and you can click chat tabs to switch or you can tap the tab key to switch between uh, different tabs. If you click this little question mark, you'll get the command list and you can go through these on your own. Uh, I don't know how many of these all work, how many which ones might not work. Um, but go through these, uh, use the ones that you want to try. This is the uh, most extensive list of commands that I know of um, that is official. So go ahead and check those out. You can also collapse your chat box down here if it's getting in the way when you're looking at future menus. So let's get going and move into the deeper menus ahead. All right, so on the home page, we can see some of our options here to switch between campaign and kingdom, which campaign our characters are locked or not locked to. Um, this will tell you what campaigns these vessels uh, or characters can enter and you can get descriptions of the campaign, the population, how long it's going to last, things like that. You can also check the map. You can see the scoring. Now the scoring works um, depending on how many uh, outposts, forts, keeps are controlled and every certain amount of time, as you can see here, potential points collected in 14 minutes. So once this triggers, whatever the score, potential scores will be added to the current score. Um, there was a new post about how scoring will work possibly in the future, depending on uh, certain certain concepts such as who's controlling more or a bonus pool or during certain seasons. Um, as you know, there's spring, fall, winter, uh, summer seasons in Crowfall. And depending on the season, there will be more points. Um, you can take a look at the map and on the map you can zoom in or out. You can go ahead and click any of these territories. The territories represent uh, are represented by this colored ring, which kind of tells you who's got mostly of most of the control in this territory. So, for example, this one is all almost all chaos. So we will suspect to see all of the you know the forts and uh, things controlled by uh, all the outposts, all these little flags. These are all controlled by chaos. Now, if you changed, for example, to this other one where it's clearly more controlled by order, as you can see, they control almost all the outposts, all the forts. And that's how you can take a look at the uh, campaign map and see what's going on in your particular campaign. You can kind of figure out where help might be needed or maybe where you want to avoid uh, if you're solo and you're, uh, you're chaos, for example, um, you would use this map. Okay, the other thing you can do on your home screen, of course, is create a character, which I don't have a empty spot right now. Um, but if I was to uh, delete a character, you would be able to do that. Let's put in this little code. And I can, I kind of went over the create a character system. It's very basic. You choose your race, you choose your class. You can then uh, change your sex, you can change your hairstyles, um, you can change your hair colors. Pretty cool. And uh, put in your name, and that's it. You can randomize this, of course, as well. Um, you know, the character the, the character creator is not super in-depth just yet, but it's pretty good. And that's the character creation. Let's keep moving. All right, next up is skills. Now, skills I've covered in a few videos. I don't want to go too deep into it. Uh, you'll have your primary track, your secondary track. You can browse those tracks and switch between them. Um, you can take two of the three. Um, so choose the two that you want to you wanna focus on. Uh, you can always browse and look at ones that maybe you're interested in, see if maybe that's something for you. Uh, for example, I just switched to crafting. I'll start generating points here. Uh, the other thing you can do is spend points, obviously. And if I come here and click the box, I will start spending my points. I'll get a pip and the dashed lines represent how many pips I need to unlock the next in line. So if I click another one, as you can see, I've unlocked some other pips and then, you know, kind of go down and follow that, that, that particular branch. Um, I want to focus on iron. Let's say I can start focusing on this uh, points start to be spent pretty heavily. Okay. And that is basically it for, um, the skill tree in just brief. I just wanted to show that obviously we have some videos here that explain it uh, But that's it next. All right next up purchases uh, a shop is not there 
However, it will be soon. Purchases, uh, you're going to be given some testing copies of things depending on uh, your, your status. You might have bought others. Whatever you have here, you will click and import and that will go into your spirit bank, which I will also cover. And then once you're you have these items you can use them in your eternal kingdom which i will cover uh, in a little bit as well next all right videos we have a bunch of good videos here they're very basic um they're done by the profile staff i would check these out um you know these are good to watch i'm not going to kind of cover them they're pretty self-explanatory but go ahead and check these out all right next up is settings and now settings obviously it's going to be up to your uh you know your preference for graphics i tend to like things lower only because of performance in large groups um the game runs great for me in higher settings i just leave it low because when there's a lot of stuff on the screen big battles it tends to get a little uh a little slow but performance is something that is being worked on you have uh, more atmosphere and more advanced settings that you can check so if you want to see what the game looks like on high i would definitely suggest go ahead and raising up your quality level see how uh, high you can get it uh, without it being too laggy um, but then when you're ready to start like fighting i would suggest putting it lower just for the time being uh, we have audio, which is self-explanatory. You have input. Now there are keybinds to the game, which we didn't have before. So go ahead, set your keybinds for everything that you might need. Uh, I, I see a lot of people ask, why am I started walking? Well, you probably hit C. Uh, come here, change your keybinds to how you want, how to toggle between trays, how to use your ability, how to build, uh, use your ability buttons, um, how to use your combos, how to do building placement when you're in EK. All of that stuff is here in settings. Let's keep moving. All right, so I have entered the game, and but let's go ahead and briefly go over all the items, and let's kind of do it in a quadrant fashion. So let's start in the northwest, uh, top left corner, I should say, uh, corner of your screen. You're going to see a description about what your ping is, what your frames are, things of that nature, the server, IP, all this other good stuff, your location that you can give to people if you are found something good, uh, your XYZ coordinates that you can pass to guildmates or friends. Um, you will see also the hit points, energy, stamina, and the hunger bar. You can see I'm pretty hungry right now. And under that, you will have the uh, party screen. So if you were in a group, you would be able to see your party members there as well. All right, let's check ahead with the top. A middle is where you'll see how much time to the next turn in using those points that I discussed briefly in the uh, map overview. The total score is right now as well as a compass so you can align yourself and know which way you're going so i want to go north i'm going to point north uh, i want to go south i'll go south and that's pretty much the compass area the top right hand corner is where we'll have our buffs and debuffs so uh, these unfortunately you can't mouse over them just yet even if you got control of your mouse because they get covered over um they don't have that yet i have been told that that will be something that will probably be added in the future but for now most of them anyway are ones you put into your discipline so you should kind of know what they are and you can check those in your discipline screen and the debuff for example low stamina regen pretty self-explanatory i'm not regening stamina uh, stamina because i'm hungry um let's move on to the bottom right hand corner is where you'll see your paper doll for durability. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's much like other games. You have your season and time tracker in the bottom for the campaign itself. Uh, you'll see the spring, summer, fall, winter icons in the quadrants. So uh, it'll tell you what season you're in, how much longer the campaign will last. And also you'll see a night and day um, marker in the middle top half of that inner circle there. And you'll have the, the, the particular campaign you're in. Let's move on. So to the bottom middle, you'll have your typical tray that I'm sure people are familiar with if they're MMO players. And you can switch between your different trays with the buttons that you've hotkeyed. So for me, I have it on my, my function keys because I have that on a side button. And uh, the typical 1 through 10 and your ultimate is Q and your uh, retaliate and combo is E. So go ahead and use those for your abilities. And that's where you'll drag your abilities. You'll also have your experience monitor and the uh levels is maximum is 30 right now that's why i don't have any xp and that's pretty much it for the main screen let's go ahead and hit escape and go through each of these quick options very fast all right top left is your personal craft and you can hit j to open that um that's the hotkey you can switch and these are all the things you can craft out in the field without a um without a table if you want to craft better disciplines they only cost one ore and one dust and disciplines are something we'll explain in a second but go ahead, make your disciplines. You can make things out here. If you want to craft something better, like I see a lot of people, how do I craft my own weapons? You're going to want to make a blacksmithing uh, a blacksmithing discipline, equip it, and then find a blacksmithing table in a fort that your team controls. 
all right that's it for that's it for the crafting window you'll also see um an example of what it takes to craft assembly statistics difficulty and success chance when you start crafting higher level items all right so let's go down the rest of the list here really quick uh the next one in line will be your spell book which you can hit with k uh, you're going to want to use this to in install your passives your ultimates if you have more and your powers you have some filters here as well as your defensive right click abilities and you can put those onto your trace so that's your ability or spell book k next down in line you're going to have your regular talent tree which has been replaced from the old system of the class trees uh, you can hit this with n or you can click talents from your inventory side and this is where you will spend your points that you get when you level up. As you can see, I'm already max level, so I spent all my points. Uh, but same system, put your abilities in, see what they do here. You can mouse over them to see what they do, um, and that type of uh, thing there. So go ahead and do your talents as you go. If you have any questions, there are probably a lot of people that can help you on your specific class. Uh, and that's the talent tree. So let's move down. The next one is the spirit bank. You can click that, or you can hit B to bring up your spirit bank. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory, but in the corner here, you'll see imports and exports. Taking items in and out of your spirit bank will cost you imports and exports. And if you meet these limits or you exceed them, you'll no longer be able to import and export. So be careful when you are dropping stuff in and out of your inventory. Uh, sometimes when you hit escape, sometimes you'll think you're just opening your inventory, but you actually still have your spirit bank open. Like if I hit uh, escape right here and I hit I for inventory, you'll notice I also still have bank open. That's something that needs to be changed. Uh, so be careful you don't want to deposit a bunch of stuff when you think you're just trying to equip them for uh, for example okay next in line is your settings which we covered but this is more of an in-game version of it we covered that in the beginning um, you can reset your default uh, ability your default settings here if you wish you can also go ahead and click the uh, skills and you can manage your skills while you're in game with this little barbell uh, the next item in line is the map obviously you can open this with m same deal you can open up the campaign that's all doable from within the game as well. Uh, finally, the videos. We covered this, how the videos uh, are in the tutorials from Crowfall. And here you can log out to the character screen or the old power down button. You can exit out completely out of the tray. Uh, one thing I didn't cover when I was talking about uh, the UI up above, you'll notice that I have an outpost um, capture point because, the, well, currently it's completely owned by uh, by Chaos, which I am. If it was someone else, you would be able to come in here, kill the guards, and you would stand in this circle and slowly cap this area for your faction, and that would uh, flip the specific flag in the map where you are to your faction's color. So that's it for this portion. Uh, let's kind of go over the right side area, because when the menu is open, your inventory is always open by default. Your typical paper doll where you can drop in your gear for your slots, your rings, your uh, your any of your other abilities like mounts um, and also you'll see your stats what your stats are and what each stat improves so strength uh, will improve attack power and final modifier damage dex will do critical chance and armor bonus you can see with these kind of brackets here so that will tell you what points do for you uh, that might help when you're deciding what to increase your points when you level up uh, so you know use your judgment make your own builds this is pre-alpha so you'll have some time to quickly level guys and try new things uh, you can also expand this with more uh, with a lot greater detail as you can see here all the statistics what you are currently based on your vessel and your gear and your your passives will change here you can mouse over those for any information and uh, that's that you can do that same for crafting as well as exploration so how much damage you do like quarrying mining for example that's all here for you to look at yourself I'm not going to go over that uh, the next little button here is the disciplines, which I see people ask a lot about. Your racial discipline is always slotted, and you can mouse over it to see what you get as a centaur, for example. All this stuff is is just baked into the race. Um, the next are the majors. You can have two majors, one mastery, three minors at max level. Um, so I have these uh, in these installed. If you wish to change these, which you're going to do often, you can click it out, drag it out, and delete it. And then you can replace it with a new one. Unfortunately, there's no way to take it out quickly. Uh, and it's kind of a shame since it only costs one ore, one dust. It would be easy if I could just drop them in and out. I waste a lot of time crafting new new disciplines for basically nothing anyway. Uh, and also in the real game, it's going to be much harder to make this. Okay, so that's that. And then finally, just quickly, armor mitigations for the different types of armors in the game and the, ar the different types of damage in the game and how much you will mitigate from those specific sources of damage. 
And that's it for the in the UI interface. Uh, you'll also have you know different UI interfaces if you're sieges, um, if you're doing uh, you know taking down territories. I don't have any of that footage right now, but it's pretty much the same uh, same deal with um, the top being where you'll have your um, your objectives and how to flip those. And that's it for this, guys. Next thing what I'm going to do is quickly just go over Eternal Kingdom. So I'll see you there. All right, so quickly I'm back here on the, the, the realm select. I'm going to make a kingdom of my own. Uh, you could also go to all and sort out and join ones that are created by other players. Some are popular and always open, like Strathers Lawn is a pretty popular uh, EK with all the crafting tables. If you need to uh, jump in and craft, I would suggest going here because all the tables are there. But I'm just going to boot up and jump into my kingdom and I'll see you inside. All right, so I am inside of my Eternal Kingdom. Um, one thing you're going to notice here is that you have this extra button here for making your uh, making your parcels and organizing your parcels. Now, I've imported some items and some parcels of land. Um, when I click that button, you can do things like rename the kingdom, change the description, make it public, enable PvP so you can test and fight on this particular EK if you'd like. You can pick up all your pieces. You can rotate the map. Uh, you can change the parcel name. So if I wanted to pick up parcels, I can adjust them, but they just have to snap together. Um, and you can organize that how you wish. Once you hit submit, you're just gonna terraform your land right away and you're gonna be able to uh, be in it. Now I've moved myself into a parcel. I get a lot of uh, people asking, well, why can't I place a building? Certain parcels do not have these building tokens. Now you'll see certain buildings require you to have a certain amount of building tokens. So I'm gonna bring in, for example, this uh, throne room lodge. I bring this in. And if I mouse over it, I need to have one large building slot, which I do have. So if I was to right click that item from my inventory, it's gonna take me into the placement mode where I can kind of zip around and find a spot for it. Hopefully I can find one because it's kind of a big building here. Okay, so I have my little building there. I'm just gonna place it. So you can rotate, you can move it up and down with the key bindings to your side there. Let's just drop it so we can see how quickly I just terraformed my land and threw in a building and there it is so now i have my building my lodge down inside these buildings you could also drop things like crafting tables and there's sockets for things to snap into place such as uh, vendors and other items so you can basically make your ek how you want you can come to it pick it up move it um, and i've made some walls over here just as an example that i was going to use in another video um, but that's pretty much it, guys. You can come into your inventory, drop down your defensive items. So the, the walls count as defensive items. Um, they use a different type of token slot than the buildings, which I'll show you here in a second. I'm just going to snap these together if I can. So the blue locks are snap spots. Here are your defense tokens. Uh, I can have up to 35 small. Uh, this is a small defense, for example. Um, and, you know... I'm not a super creative guy. I'm not into like the Minecraft aspect. I'll probably get into my EK a lot more when it's uh, live, but for now I've kind of been ignoring it. But you know, please, uh, I think the best part about EKs is it's a great practice spot. Maybe you're not comfortable running out into the world and you just kind of want to practice fighting. This is a great time to maybe invite a friend, uh, give them permissions, enable PVP, make it private, and test out fighting. Um, you know, make a bunch of different vessels Test them out. Um, you can put sacrifice pits. You can uh, level your guys in the EKs if you if you really wanted to. And test fighting here. That's probably the best use for it. Uh, other than that, it's probably a good place where you, if you once you have all the resources to make a bunch of crafting tables, so that you can just drop them into your buildings and come here and hang out, craft. Um, you know the possibilities are endless with what you can do with EKs and how you can use them. Maybe you can make like a wall maze and you know, give a prize to people. There's so many things you can do. It's up to your imagination. But I just wanted to quickly cover EKs, the interface, and the differences from a regular kingdom. But that's it, guys. I think we've covered pretty much all the UI elements, the keybinds um, for Crowfall 5.8. I hope you like this video. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more content. You can check out my Twitch channel, check out the official Crowfall channel, and uh, we'll see you in game. Until next time, this is That Erickson.